St. Louis, I know that the Blues have been playing with your emotions. They've been playing with my emotions. But let me ask you this. If the Blues defeat the Coyotes tonight, do you think you're going to have a little bit more trust in this team? Well, let's go talk about that coming up here on Locked on Blues. Your Locked on Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. St. Louis, welcome back to Locked on Blues. I am your host of Locked on Blues, Kaylee Taylor-Simon here, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Right now, I feel like I'm in this really weird funk. Well, not funk, okay? But I'm in this weird mindset with the Blues to where I want to be excited about them, but at the same time, I am so apprehensive due to the things that I've seen already on ice. And right now, the Blues and Coyotes are actually currently playing each other. I will dive into that and my observations thus far. I also want to touch on Baruby's future being with the Blues and uh, if I think his time will be cut short. And come on now, the Blues need to figure out the defense. Most importantly, the defense is probably the number one thing that the Blues need to figure out. But they're not going to be able to with, again, All the guys with a no trade clause. And this just frustrates me in so many ways. But I'm going to talk about that with you all coming up here in Lockdown Blues. First off, hello. How are you? Grab a snack. Let's talk some hockey. Because right now, the St. Louis Blues are taking on the Arizona Coyotes. And this is the Blues' fourth and final game of this home stance. For those that don't know and maybe need a little bit of a refresher, The Blues defeated the Devils, defeated the Canadiens. Unfortunately, they lost to the Jets, and now um, they are taking on the Coyotes. This is the second time that the Blues and Coyotes have played each other this season. Unfortunately, the first time it did not go the Blues this way, as the Coyotes were able to beat the Blues 6-2. It was an ugly game for St. Louis. But right now, right as I was about to film this episode, I got annoyed. And I'm smiling through the pain because, unfortunately, the Arizona Coyotes were able to tie up the game at one apiece. You might say to me, Haley, what's going on with the Blues? And I will go back and I will say this time and time again, it's the defense, okay? So let me tell you about the beautifulness, I don't know if that's a word, of Oscar Sundquist. He scores a goal with two minutes into the first period, making it one nothing. assisted by Sammy Bray and Jacob Vanra. And unfortunately, um, Lawson Krause is able to score a goal for Arizona. Literally, this happened a minute ago. It was assisted by hometown kid himself, Clayton Keller, who I said time and time again, he would be a problem. And net tonight for the St. Louis Blues is none other than Hofer, which I really disagree with. I understand you need to give my boy Jordan Binghamton a break. But the last time that the Coyotes and Blues played each other, Hofer was in net and things did not go well. You cannot underestimate the Arizona Coyotes. And it's funny because a couple seasons ago, you could say that you could underestimate them, that they weren't going to be a good team that they're not competitive. But right now, the way that the Coyotes have been playing, they are an above 500 team. They've been extremely dominant on the ice. And I think it would be foolish to not put in your starting goalie against them. This is a divisional game nonetheless. And it's a game where you really need to win. You want to come out of this home stance with winning three out of four. You don't want to come out of this home stance having it be split. You had such a great weekend. You're able to defeat the Devils. Mind you, they had, yes, their backup goalie and their star, Jack Hughes, wasn't on the ice. I understand that. I understand with the Canadians, same kind of thing, that they're just not that strong of a team. But don't you want to win three out of four? And I think the problem the Blues had the first time that they played the Canadians, I mean, not the Canadians, the Coyotes, see all these teams of the sea. The first time they played the Coyotes was 
is that they underestimated their abilities. I did as well. I came on this podcast and I will admit it. And I said, hey, listen, the Coyotes are not a good team. It's not going to be a challenge. Put Joel Hofer in net and let's call it a day. I don't feel that same way now. I really don't. I feel like the Coyotes are a team that they made a lot of moves in this offseason. They made a lot of moves even last season, to be honest, but they're a team that is completely different than this, the joke of the NHL. And yes, is it easy to sometimes overlook the changes that they made because there's other things that you think of and think of the Coyotes? Absolutely. I'm not going to get into this because I'm not about trashing teams, but I think you understand where I'm saying where I don't think the players who they acquired is what made the headlines this offseason or the offseason prior. So it's one of those things where I think the Blues – Really should have started Jordan Binghamton in net. I do. I understand that it was a struggle against the Jets, but you got to put these guys in when they have abilities to win in games. There's not that many games where I can look at the schedule and say, hey, I think the Blues are going to win this game. I did that exercise last week to prove the point of maybe how the coaches think. Maybe I was a little bit too harsh. (laughs) Maybe I overlook some teams, but I think that the point of all this is you're not a team like the Boston Bruins, a good team that is able to look at different teams throughout the league and say, you know what, this will be a win for us no matter what, let's put in our backup goalie. That's not how the Blues are going to be operating this season. Um, Even the San Jose Sharks, as much as, you know, people kind of trash them around the league, um, I think there's a lot of teams out there that have had – lost consecutive games, maybe not 11, but definitely have lost consecutive games. And the Oilers, I mean, they only won two games this season. So you really need to look at the teams around you in this league and know that eventually the teams that are playing poorly are going to win some games. It is nearly impossible to go 0-82 this season. Well, in any season but it's nearly impossible, okay? Like, I actually don't know what that entails to go 0-82. I really want to know if that's even possible. But, I mean, I'm sure it is. Maybe, I don't know. That sounds a little too harsh. So the Blues are obviously going to win some games that you don't expect them to win. I didn't expect them to win against the Devils. They surprised me. They won. I was pleased. And I wasn't expecting them to have the huge win they did against the Canadians. But guess what? They did. And that got me a little bit too excited. And I think with the Blues, I know how the story goes time and time again to where I do get excited about this team. But going back to the Blues and Coyotes, because this all goes back to the game that's being played on ice right now. This game is probably the biggest game in this home stands, considering the fact that this is the determining factor. Hey, did you win in this home stands or did you just split it? And I think splitting it at this point is unacceptable. Would I be surprised? Absolutely not. Would I be disappointed? 100% because I do think that Joel Hofer does have abilities that are good about him. He has traits that are good about him in net. But I would feel a lot more confident with Binner in net. But again, one of the big things that I talk about here in Lockdown Blues, one of the big stories, one of the big topics is about the Blues' defense, which I will get into. But my observations thus far, I mean, there was a little scrapple on ice between a Blaine and a Yodis player, and I thought that was kind of crazy. But I think that the Coyotes are just a fast team, and the Blues are doing a good job with being able to keep up with that. But it's a very strange kind of way in a way where the Blues, they have their abilities, okay? They're taking a lot of shots on net. They have 15 shots on net right now to only Arizona having three. So the thing that's a little, I guess you can say, frustrating is that despite the Blues having all these shots on net, the Yotes are able to really make good defensive plays and to be able to save them. But I think if the Blues just continue to be dominant on ice, I mean, the Coyotes have had more penalty minutes. The Blues have been winning their face-offs. And it seems like even though Arizona, yes, they look like the faster team in my opinion – I wish I was able to get like a speedometer stick so I could actually give you some numbers 
But just from watching this game so far, it just seems like, yes, the Yotis might be faster, but the Blues seem to have better puck control. And that's what's going to win them a game. And we will see. I mean, right now it's 1-1. It's the first intermission. And I usually like to fill my episodes on game days during intermission so I can talk a little bit about what I'm seeing in the moment. And then on tomorrow's episode will be a complete post game. So that's my little format I like to do here on a Lockdown Blues. We like to uh, we like to talk. So before I talk to you about Craig Berube's future, I need to talk to you about your own future. Okay, we spend a lot of time together, and we get fired up together on wins and losses. Who starts? Who sits? And I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today, I want our chat to be a little more personable. I just learned you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. You realize what that means? Bring on the extended travel. Bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issues. You are covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about if you can refill or not refill generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Revato prescriptions. And this is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12 month supply of your daily medication. Remember to use promo code locked on at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer has this to say about Jace I'm thankful for the service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills and have to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered an antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would like to get some peace of mind by having a one-year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. What's Craig's Baruby's future? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the answers, but what I can say is that if the Blues are treading in a downward direction, it may not be for much longer. I did talk about this in a couple episodes ago here in Lockdown Blues, but I think after this weekend, it made me think, a little bit more deeply about what this could mean for Baruby. And if maybe the Blues have this weird pattern of winning games, losing games, winning games, losing games, that that could still be just as detrimental as continuously losing games. If the Blues are only winning because teams are starting and they're backup goalies, because teams are taking the Blues as a joke, so to say, then is much changing about this team are the Blues being looked at as a competitor? Or is it just, hey, you're going to win some games when teams are having off nights? And the Blues shouldn't have to count on teams to have off nights. They shouldn't have to count on teams using their backups. They shouldn't have to count on teams playing a little bit down because of how poorly they've been this season. There was a lot of bad teams in the NHL this year. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I feel like I have seen more bad teams than good teams in the league. And I know I'm laughing when I say that, but it's so rare to me where I'm seeing so many teams struggle so far this season. It really is. It's unbelievable. Um, but they always say the first step in a way to fixing a team is to fire the coach. And I have a problem with this. I do. I respect Craig Berube. That is something that I have said since day one of starting this podcast. Over 100 episodes, by the way. I just found that out. Um, I would hate to see him go. I respected him as a player. I respected him as a coach. But most importantly, I respect him as the man that brought us the cup. And that's all there is to it. I understand that that was years ago. I understand that things change, but for me, at least, I can't accept the fact that this team isn't responding to him when he is so intelligent and he has such a high hockey IQ 
that I just don't understand why the players aren't responding to him. Brandon Shen, you know, captain of the Blues. I love saying that, by the way. I don't know if he needs to tell the guys, listen, this guy knows what he's doing. You need to trust him. I don't know if it's a trust factor. I don't know exactly what it is. But you can tell with the way that the Blues are playing on ice that there is a disconnect in this team. They don't function as a team. It is strange to watch sometimes. And I'm not saying that it's like that all the time. It's not very obvious all the time. But there are some moments where I observe the guys sitting on the bench. I do that quite often. And it just looks like they're not really connected. I know that sounds a little bit silly. Like, Haley, what does that even mean? Well, when you look at teams that are really good, like, for instance, I'm going to use them as an example, the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, If you look at their bench during games, they're all kind of like, chirping on each other in a good way, not a bad way, not chirping in a bad way. Um, And they just look like a unit. You compare that bench to the Blues' bench, complete opposite. And I think that this all just goes into, hey, do you respect your coach? And I hope the Blues do. I think anybody that's grown up and played hockey or played a sport knows that your coach is somebody that you need to have respect for or else you're not going to get minutes, you know, playing or minutes on ice, you know. So I think that there is a respect. I just don't know if they're taking in what he's saying, and I just don't see it on the ice. So it sucks. It's annoying, but that's what I'm observing. As a business owner, you realize that there are times when receivables might fall behind, but that doesn't mean you need to fall behind on vendor payments, payroll, or rent. For more than 25 years, Parkview Advance has helped businesses secure working capital from 5000 to $1.5 million. Parkview Advance can improve your working capital in as little as 24 hours. It's a much easier process than what you might imagine. We invite the many entrepreneurs that are locked on NHL fans to learn more by calling us at 203-675-0071 or go to parkviewadvance.com. If your business needs working capital, call Parkview Advance today. Parkview Advance, helping businesses with their working capital, go to parkviewadvance.com. One of the biggest problems that the Blues need to desperately figure out is the defense. This comes with no surprise whatsoever, but... Now I feel like I am repeating myself, but I don't know what solution the Blues can realistically come up with with the contracts that these guys are in. I have been brainstorming. I even gave Armstrong the opportunity to talk to players and to ask them where they want to go. I don't think he listened, but I did put that idea out there for him. As a fan I don't think there's anything more frustrating than seeing a slow defense. I think that hockey is one of the sports where defense is so vital. I mean, every position is vital, but defense especially is vital. I don't know if they need to switch up the pairs a little bit more, do a more drastic uh, combos for that. But I just don't understand what the Blues can do at this point. I feel like they kind of dug themselves into like a really deep hole. And it's not looking good. Now, I will go back and say, as much as I've kind of laughed and joked about the whole idea of Army going up to the players and asking them, hey, uh, if you weren't with the Blues, where would you want to go? At this point, (laughs) it might be a good idea. Now, I understand you can't ask just like bluntly, like, hey, where would you want to play at if you weren't here? But... I feel like they need to get rid of some of these guys because of their contracts. And as I said, just get younger. And if the Blues, I hate to be this person. I I don't want to be this person, but I have to say it. I'm uncomfortable saying it. If the Blues are going to continue to play poorly, the best thing that can come out of this season would be good draft picks and to make some moves during free agency in the offseason. If you're going to be bad, be bad. I don't want them to be bad. I think the Blues, they do have some potential. 
But at this rate, I just don't feel confident in saying, yeah, this team can make the playoffs. I don't see them as a playoff contending team. I don't, not yet. Maybe if they made some moves, made some adjustments and actually had a strong penalty kill, had a better power play, then I could say that. But right now as a fan, I can't say that even though I am rooting for that. Okay. Whoa. Hail. What exactly does that mean? What do you mean you're rooting for that, but you don't see that? Okay. As somebody that can look at something in an unbiased way, if I'm just observing the St. Louis Blues, they're not going to be good enough to make the playoffs. Now, as a fan of the Blues, I am rooting for them to make the playoffs, okay? I know. It's a little confusing. Welcome to my life where I come on this podcast and I try not to be too much of a fan, but I am a fan and I want them to make the playoffs as a wild card uh, team, obviously. So it's a predicament. It's tough, but tomorrow it's going to be a fun little episode because it will be a post game. Um, Hopefully it'll be a win. If not, it might be a little bit of a sad, are we feeling blues day, but Hey, what can I say? I love this hockey team and they have a chokehold on me. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get back to the game now, but as always, let's go blues.